I am super excited to introduce the founder and CEO of EXP Realty, Glenn Sanford. Glenn, how are you today? Excellent, Tom. Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for inviting me in. Well, thank you so much. So we don't have much time here, but I would love for you to share briefly um, your story, if you could, to start off with. Uh, yeah, um, my mind went to the uh, to the movie The Jerk, but anyway, <laughs> uh, the uh, um, the uh, so you know I I was born in in uh, northern Alberta. I uh, grew up a uh, son of a struggling entrepreneur who hit it big at one point, and then he lost it all. Uh, I so I learned about business and entrepreneurship from him. I uh, got involved in technology, and then um, kind of everything kind of came together. And uh, in uh, 2002, uh, when I got into real estate and sort of used my business acumen that I developed by the time I was 35 and my tech skills, and kind of grew my uh, personal practice. Uh, fourth full year in the business, I was in the top 50 nationally with Keller Williams. Uh, went independent my uh, in 2007, um, and then. In 2009, after the crash, the housing market crash, really just took that and said, um, you know, how do we build a profitable real estate brokerage in good times and bad times? And uh, in in sort of figuring that out, figured the single biggest cost to run a brokerage is bricks and mortar. We had high speed internet everywhere, and uh, and so why do we need physical offices? And uh, eventually, those will go away, and you know, it might take twenty or thirty years, but it was a path that was pretty obvious to me at the time. So why not sort of build that? And uh, and then the the fundamental question was, you know, uh, really, what would it take for me as a top producing real estate professional to be willing to move my license to a brokerage that had no physical offices? And so that's what we went about solving, and that's where our rev share and our splits and cap models, and and then ultimately the equity piece all came into play. Because with all those ingredients, me as a top producer, I would have definitely went for that had it existed in the marketplace at the time. So that's what we built, and ninety thousand agents later, here we are. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your humbleness, your transparency, and your vision. It's just. Um, amazing. So the the name of our call today is Navigate 2024. And uh, my favorite saying has always been from Wayne Gretzky, you have to skate to where the puck is going to be. So if you could share, if you, you know, with your crystal ball, where do you think we're going this year, 2024? Yeah. So, you, you know, the we're still in this sort of high interest rate environment. You know, we've got some economic backdrop news that we had in core inflation, I think went up a little bit uh, to three and a half percent. So there's a question as to whether the Fed's going to ultimately lower interest rates, uh, the number of times that they were predicting, which means that fundamentally, we'll probably be in that plus 6% um, mortgage rate space, you know, for the you know most of 2024, I would suspect. And uh, and that, of course, uh, doesn't quite unlock, you know, people who have financed it, you know, three percent or sub three percent or even you know under you know under four uh, percent, because you know getting a a, a replacement property is going to be more expensive if they're a payment buyer, which of course you know over fifty percent of home buyers are in fact payment buyers, um, so they're they're impacted. So I think we're still. Going to see, uh, I think we're going to see a market that's not too dissimilar to 2023, but I don't think it's going to be any slower. So this is kind of the new norm, and this is where we'll grow from. Uh, I think going forward, I don't think that the housing market has the. I mean, there's just too many people that have to move, um, so there's a certain amount of inventory that's going to unlock regardless, uh, and there's still uh, definitely um, uh, uh, consumers in the marketplace that are still willing to buy even at the higher interest rates. So I, I kind of see 2004 as being similar to 2003. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, we uh, we saw that you were able to successfully navigate a profitable, we'll call it nominally profitable EXP in 2023, but yet profitable and while a lot of firms were not enjoying uh, that uh, favorable condition. 
So uh, if 2024 is at least as good, then um, then I presume we'll have more profit, and uh, so which is great. We um, that being said, you've got to imagine, Glenn, that as agents were concerned about what we're hearing with this lawsuit and uh, the threat to buyer commissions in particular, and and our company, right? Because we're all stockholders with you, uh, maybe not quite holding the same amount of stock, but uh, we're all in the game with you. And uh, so how defensible would you say our position is? And uh, is there anything unique to our model that maybe would cause us to be more defensible or not? Yeah, so um, I think it's very defensible. You know, the, the challenge with the uh, previous verdict that came down, and I think the judge has uh, you know, already sort of telegraphed his sort of, uh, understanding of it as well, is that we had, you know, there were eight or so jurors that were sort of opining on an industry about whether they thought real estate commissions were inflated and that there was collusion, et cetera, in the industry. Uh, NAR, of course, is part of the backdrop of that. And of course, for us to op- even operate a brokerage and actually even be in business, we had to f- effectively be members of NAR almost everywhere. But we made to make, make it simple, we were members of NAR everywhere. But, um, you know, NAR basically had set the rules back in, you know, the 90s as to how, how, how this industry will operate. Um, and for us to actually even run a brokerage, in or not, I mean, you can look at Purple Bricks, you can look at Zip Realty, you can look at Help You Sell, you can look at all these other sort of alternative models to real estate, and none of them made it. So, which basically means that if you didn't operate based on the rules that were sort of handed down by NAR, you could not run a effective business. So, I'm, I'm not making an excuse. I'm just saying that was the backdrop. That's what I learned in 2002 as an agent. You know, uh, I'm. I operated the you know DOJ of course got involved in 2008 settled with the industry we operated uh, inside of the rules that DOJ and uh, NAR had um, had agreed to even before we really started EXP in earnest so uh, you know at the end of the day we feel like we've got a good solid case one of the other things that's going on right now in the Supreme Court is uh, uh, I think it's the US Soccer League versus FIFA so the uh, and and uh, what it basically comes down to is they were basically making a very similar claim about uh, anti uh, I think anti competitive or or Sherman antitrust or whatever relative to the soccer league because they only allowed so many soccer teams to be part of the league. There's all all these rules. So um, and that was handed down by FIFA. And so in order to actually even operate a successful soccer club, you had to operate based on FIFA's rules. So. Um, so, so if that basically it comes down, and the, the there's the the Supreme Court's hearing it now, there's a good good chance that if they agree that in order for the U.S. Soccer League to exist and to operate and to be able to compete internationally, they need to um, they they can comply with because it's better for worldwide competition to agree to these rules. That actually helps this sort of we'll call it antitrust type of um, uh, uh, issue that is sort of with the industry. So I think those are a couple of things. Obviously, you saw, you know, Remax and, and, and Real G slash Anywhere, they, they settled um, their cases. Uh, we still got a year or two before we, the ours even goes to trial. And the current judge on the, on the case that had the first judgment Instead of forcing the all of the defendants to come up with their bonds to appeal um, within 30 days, which was $1.7 billion, which nobody could come up with, the judge kicked the can down the road to April, I think it was, before sort of figuring out sort of next steps and appeal processes and those types of things. So I think there's a, um, I, I think there's basically a, uh, uh, pressure not to blow up the industry and to create some sort of off ramp for various players and uh, and the industry as a whole. So that's kind of what's where where we're at. But 
you know, we, there's a lot of different options that we have between now and the point where we where there's litigation. I think there's at least, I don't know, nine different lawsuits we've been named in, I think, five, maybe six of them. Um, most or all of them will get consolidated into one suit, um, which makes it a lot easier. Uh, and and all of these sort of sort of motions and you know we're filing for for this and that. Well, there's a lot of filings along the way, but in this whole time, um, you know we'll be looking at each of our opportunities to to sort of kind of do our our thing. Now, since this is you know primarily EXP agents, and I know we've got some guests, but we did just for the you know, because of all of these lawsuits and we got a ton of legal fees and we got, you know, don't know exactly everything that's going on. We did make a slight adjustment going forward on our risk management. I don't know if anybody paid attention to sort of the update there, but we raised the the um the cap on 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 fees. I think we went from I think we went to sixty dollars for risk management per transaction and a, and a cap of seven fifty. That's because our litigation costs uh, and our, our legal costs are going up quite a bit. And so that's a way for us to help mitigate some of that cost uh, in in the short run. And it's very it's a fairly small amount um, from an agent perspective, but in aggregate, it definitely helps us you know, pay a lot of these legal bills. Well, it you know we get to share in the upside as stockholders. Um, I think it's only fair that we uh, we also step up to the plate when it when something is threatening the company as well and. Uh, by doing it in that way, tying it to transactions um, seems quite reasonable to me anyway. Uh, would, and it's great for you to make yourself available for our group. That being said, is there going to be, uh, I know we do a lot of, uh, we have a lot of icon agents training in EXP world every week, something like 80 hours a week. Will some of that training be dedicated to communicating how are training our agents on how to communicate this to the consumer? So, you know, we, because we're already having our agents being faced with, well, hey, why don't, why do I have to pay that? You know, I hear you guys are being sued over this, you know? So how we need to know how to respond to that in an articulate way. What, uh, do we have anything planned in that regard? Um, I'm sure we will. I mean, um, but the, I mean, the, the the whole education department is always taking feedback from the field, and if this, this comes up enough, it'll definitely be added into the mix. Um, so, well, consider I, it coming. Consider it have come up. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. What uh, What about what we really like to focus on? Thank you for addressing that, though. I, I know that a lot of our agents have had some concern. It sounds what I heard you say was we've got a minimum of a year, probably two before this thing even goes to trial and that we have a defensible case. Um, of course, uh, KW and uh, Realogy or anywhere probably thought they did too. But uh, so we'll see. I'm, I'm happy to hear that the judge at least it sounds like uh, thought that maybe the jurors overstepped their bounds just a little bit there, or did it made some decisions maybe not based on the realities of the marketplace. Because at least my experience being in this industry for decades is that we're really in a unique industry where we do compete with our peers, but we also cooperate. And if price is a function of supply and demand, that system actually seems pretty intelligent to me. But um, moving on, let's talk about productivity. What, what are we doing at EXP to give our agents unique tools? I know we're somewhat unique already because we're a single broker nationwide. So we have access to data, um, unlike I believe anybody else. But what are, what are some of the tools and things that our agents are now able to take advantage of that could give them a leg up in the marketplace over their competitive peers? Yeah, well, we've got a lot of different things that we've you know, negotiated for um, you know, over, over the years. Uh, you know, you know there's, there's some companies out there that don't even provide agents with even a, a basic searchable website. So every, every one of our agents obviously gets uh, a, KV core site, it's fully featured and functional and, and, and 
and the like. And so, you know, that's kind of, we call it base technology. Um, what's interesting, I interview a ton of icon agents. In fact, I'm later on today, I'm recording four more episodes uh, of iConversations. And it's amazing, at least 50% of top producing agents, primarily individual agents, but some teams, um, are they they build their whole business around KV Core, and so you know so there's there's certainly going to be agents that are like I hate KV Core, can't stand it, it doesn't work for me, etc. But there's a lot of agents that are like I love KV Core, this thing works really really well. If I I couldn't run my business without it, so I've heard that so much. And I, as a base level technology to have Icon agents say that KV Core, a company provided product actually. Um, is is actually the game changer for their business is a big sort of first step. Um, we, one of our agents, Russell Leonard, who has had a magnificent uh, tenure with us already, when he was at KW, uh, he um, was not enamored with command, we'll say. And so he actually subscribed to KV Core and paid over $600 a month for the privilege of using it when he was at KW. So one of the first things, of course, that he did when he came to EXP uh, was uh, make that change. It, and it, of course, that fits nicely within his $85 monthly fee. So that gives you some context on you know, that, that technology relative to our competitive peers. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a great, uh, great, Great product. We did negotiate a basically the best basic the pricing for for Chime, which I think they changed their name just recently. But um, but you know, for forty bucks a month, you get a full blown Chime suite for you as a uh, which is a substantial discount over what you would get it from the marketplace. So we got a lot of these sort of we call it discounts, but we also have like making it rain's been around for a long time. I remember getting that started in probably twenty. 16, maybe 2015, 2016. And that was really to manage, you know, PPC spend on behalf of agents. So, you know, here's here's the basic um, you know, comparison and contrast. Uh, you if you're on Zillow Flex, just using that for example, I don't even know what the referral fees are now, but I think it's getting close to 40% in some yeah, markets. That's right. So if you think about, you know, what does Zillow Flex do? Well, they send you leads and then you pay these referral fees on closed transactions and you're, you're paying 40%. So I, I'm going to use a very a, a low overall commission, especially when you start to think California. But let's just say the commission is $10,000. Um, that means that you're spending $4,000 per closed transaction through Zillow Flex, M making it rain. On the other hand, if you jump in and use that, your the average nationwide cost per lead is about fifteen, sixteen dollars a lead. Let's just say it's twenty five dollars a lead, and and let's just use the 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 math here of uh, let's just say two percent of those turn into closed transactions. You know, you start to sort of do the math. Um, what is what is uh, twelve hundred and fifty bucks? Twelve hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. So so the difference is massive, and that's. And, and agents that actually work KV Core and work the leads coming through PPC, spe specifically PPC from Google, their close ratios are are significantly above that, typically five to ten percent, because these are people who who proactively typed into the search engines "homes for sale in Roseville, California," and those are intent people looking to purchase. So you get a good close ratio. So your actual per close transaction cost should be around four hundred dollars. So one tenth the cost. So making rains another one. We we formed a, a semi exclusive relationship with Realty.com in the U.S. A an exclusive relationship with Realty.com or Realty.ca in Canada. Um, so those are lead generation opportunities. Zucasa, which we've we've now grown, it's creating its own. Um, lead flow it's now has now moved into the US uh, as well as a third party portal that we own and we so we get exclusive opportunities to work with that so these are all sort of lead gen sort of opportunities then there's revenos and all the things that come out of revenue so leo Perea is I, I think we've done over 10,000 transactions in the last 12 months coming through revenue so these are opportunities brought to exp and so obviously significantly more leads than that 
but revenue to- opportunities coming from revenues for EXP agents. And we're continuing to go out and negotiate these nationwide deals where we get either a, a significant portion or in some cases, we're the exclusive um, uh, provider of real estate agent services for these lead platforms that used to go broker to broker, brand to brand, try to sort of negotiate the local level to try to find folks. We're we're like one place to sort of do all this. So these are pretty pretty significant um, opportunities. We've got you know some other things in there like my link my lead, um, and and which is kind of a cool platform. You can go to mylinkmylead.com to check it out. But basically, it's a way to leverage um, the the exprealty.com's website to actually generate leads for you locally at no cost. But any of those leads that go outside your market area, um, we'll actually put under our ISA department. We'll actually find a good realtor from our Revenos network of of agents, um, meaning that you need to get cert- certified on on Revenos. But if you're one of those agents that's certified, you can start to get these lead opportunities as well. And then when those close, you as the one publishing, putting out the link to begin with. Um, you'll actually get paid um, a commission. We'll do all the back end, but you'll get a little override on all of that extra stuff. So we keep on sort of just building building things into the system. So, Glenn, that's fantastic. And I know there's a just a plethora of, of uh, things there with lead generation that are now available to us. If you, we're going to have to wrap up here in a moment. Uh, if you could wave your magic wand and have us do something as agents, uh, I mean, of course, we've, we need to sell property, but what kind of behavior mindset are you looking for us to adopt in, in this environment today? I know you 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 launched the company uh, at the <laughs> basically in the the uh, embers of uh, the crash. So I, I know that part of it is battle worthy. And you and I have had that conversation before. So I'm incredibly impressed with our model. But what about us? What what should we be doing to make the best of this environment that we're facing today? You know, it's always back to the basics. But, you know, I think the, the I, I, I talk about this often. I talked about the uh, um, the other day in the uh, in the big agent meeting on Friday, but it all comes back to the Zig Ziglar quote: "You can have anything you want in life if you just help enough other people get what they want." And so, I think the key is is that help others, whoever they are, other agents. And when I say help, I mean help without the well, without the need for them to join EXP. I say need. Not, not expectation, because I think the expectation is, is if you do this enough times and you help enough agents with their business, with their mindset, with their prospecting, with their business in general, they'll want to be around you more and be part of this organization that helps them even when they weren't with EXP. So I think the idea is just be of service uh, and, 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 and as as much as humanly possible, because we are all human, um, I'll take the high road with all of your engagements with with everybody that you come in contact with. Because I think at the end of the day, um, you know that's the that's the reputational legacy that uh, that we all ultimately um, have at the end of the day. Yeah, I love it. Be of service, be of value. The uh... One of our agents, Seth Rudin out of Northern California, was just asking, you know, what do you say to those folks? It's funny, you, you're you probably surprised by this question because you've been fighting for identity amongst giants, and now you've become one of those giants. What what do you say to the person that says, well, I, I think I missed the, the growth window, right? EXP is already 90,000 plus agents. I think I missed the boat. What, what do you say to that person? Um, I think that the, I think it comes back almost to what I just talked about. Uh, at the end of the day, people join people; they don't join companies. And 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 say, you know, would you like to be in business with people like this? 
you know, me, my my upline, some of the cohorts, and would that help you take your business to the next level? By the way, you know, you know, seventy plus percent of agents will not meaningfully take take advantage of the rev share opportunity. Um, some of it's statistical, uh, but some of it is really that you know agents are agents; they are out there listing and selling real estate. So, to the extent that you are um, bringing value and helping them sell more real estate, you'll make a bigger impact helping them sell more real estate than trying to get them to come in and recruit other agents. Now they will, if they sell a lot of real estate, as we know, if you're an icon, if you're a agent who does a lot of transactions, uh, you will attract agents from your production. And that's the, in my opinion, the, the best, most sustainable way to attract is just be a great agent. And then also just, again, be a good human being. Yeah. It, when I, Came to EXP, you know, it appeared to me there was a sound mission model. I initially, I was probably most impressed with the stock program. The the revenue share, of course, is magnificent. But actually, what I've come to learn is that the secret sauce of this company is its culture. And I think it's largely due to the economic model that you put in place for us because you have a vested interest in your people and they have seven people that have a vested interest in them. It is unlike anything I've ever seen, not just in real estate, but in business in its entirety. So uh, we applaud you for that because it, it's created a really unique culture and um, and and we need, to, we need to take advantage of that and pour into our people with it. So, Glenn, uh, so we know that, I do need to drop off in like yeah, one minute. Yeah, Glenn, so. thank you so much for – stay tuned, everyone else. Glenn has to drop off. Again, thank you so much, Glenn. We appreciate you, um, and we'll be in touch soon, okay? Thanks again. Thanks for okay. coming. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. Thank Thanks, Don. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Okay, okay. That was awesome. That was great. Hey, so um, what a great company. What a great visionary. I mean, and just the bottom line is to help others, serve others, our community, um, our agents, our friends, our family. I mean, you know, I'm just, I'm inspired. Um, okay, so a couple of announcements. So, hey, um, this next Friday, this Friday, we have Freedom Friday, and we have Cindy Wadsworth. And she's going to share back to business and how to get business now. So that's this Friday. And let's, you know what, we've got a great group here. I think we have over, we had 144. Uh, this is mostly our team. We have a team meeting here every single Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific to bring in the best of the best and the information to keep everyone um, to help everyone so they can reach their full potential. So thanks, everyone. Don, do you have any final parting words? No. Well, thank you guys for taking the time to be here. I think you can see that Glenn is a very thoughtful, humble individual, and which is one of the things I really appreciate about our organization is having a leader like that. So thank you for taking the time. Um, we'll see you on Friday. With Cindy. Cindy, thank you for doing that. And um, go make it happen. All right. Got your inspiration, time to put out of perspiration. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks, thank thanks you. Guys. Let's go. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys. <laughs> Let's go.